Good morning. morning. Now, you might be looking up here and saying, hey, that's not Dave, and you would be right. Um, Him and Val are on a much-needed vacation, if you hadn't heard that yet. Um, Also, my allergies are acting up like crazy, so I'm going to try my best, um, but my voice is kind of going in and out. So let me know if you ever need something repeated. Um, On to joys and concerns. Lois Kinnigy is having knee surgery tomorrow. Please keep her in your prayers for safe surgery and recovery. Please pray for Lois's daughter, Peggy Fairbanks, who is dealing with some complications from a recent surgery and will need additional surgery soon. Continue to pray for Katie's cousin, Porsche, who was recently diagnosed with a brain tumor. Are there any other joys and concerns? All right, moving on to announcements. The Alexandria Presbyterian Church is having their annual ice cream social and hymn sing on June 23rd at 7 p.m. Please sign up for summer music in the Narthes, Narthex, please, for the love that is all, for the love of all that is holy, please sign up so Dave doesn't sing. <laughs> on June 20th, we will host another community forum on employment with local employers here from 1 to 4 p.m. There will also be a resume workshop that morning at 10 a.m. by the Department of Labor. Five Star is asking for donations, which include Gatorade powder, orange, red, and blue, the tall kitchen trash bags, and black 40 to 45 gallon trash bags. Are there any other announcements today? Debbie Helbush. We did not get mom moved last Friday, so we are planning on moving Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. We will meet at mom's house, 1929H, and then go a block and a half to Cedarwood. So we really could use some help. There's not a lot, uh, but we do need some help and some pickups if possible. And we'll have pizza and pop when we get back to the church. Any other announcements? All right, our theme verse today is from Proverbs 22, 6. Start children off on the, ro- on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Please rise as you are able for the call to worship. Welcome to worship today. Open your eyes and your hearts to God's Spirit. We open our hearts to God's Spirit for us. Rejoice, for God is with us today. Amen. Our opening hymn is It Is Well With My Soul, number 840 in the Purple Hymnal.
please join me in our prayer of confession. Lord, forgive us when we see your miracles all around us and still doubt your power, presence, and love. Forgive us when we treat this world and each other with careless indifference or with malice. You who have created the most wondrous things from the smallest of particles can create in our hearts confidence and hope. From our lives, you can fashion the most delightful miracles that can serve you through acts of mercy and kindness. Free us, Lord, to receive your blessings, and having received them, to find the numerous ways in which we can serve you. Heal our wounded hearts, hear our cries, come to us and bring us home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not doubt God's power and might. It is God who has created all that is. It is God who has called to your hearts and spirits. God is with you. Praise be to God. Amen. seated. Now Randy and Linda will share special music with us.
Thank you, Randy and Linda, for sharing your special talents. Uh, will the children please come forward for the children's message with Christy Winlin? small bunch today. Hi. You want to sit down here? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. So Friday at work I had to lift and move some really heavy boxes and I thought this morning when I woke up I thought you know I should probably start lifting weights so I get a little stronger so them boxes aren't so hard to move. But how do we get stronger? How do we make our muscles stronger? We lift, we lift weights, we work out, right? Well, I didn't have any, I didn't have any uh, weights at my house. So I decided to use some cans, these cans of green beans. You think that's gonna help me get stronger if I lift these every day? It's not? I think you're right. Um, what do we need instead? That's right. Why does, it need to, why does it need to be more heavy? Stop, please. That's right. In order to make our muscles stronger, we have to do something that's hard, right? Thanks. Well, the Bible tells us the same thing is true of our spirit, our faith, right? The Bible tells us when trouble comes, in our, our Bible passage today, it says when trouble comes, we should, we should think it a joy. It should be joyful when trouble comes our way. That sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? To be happy when things get bad, when you have troubles and problems? Well, those troubles and problems come our way. We have to lean on God, right? So when we have a little problem, we trust God to handle that little problem. And then the next time when a little bit bigger problem comes, then we just have to trust him to, to handle that problem. And then when we have really big problems and our faith is a little stronger because we've been exercising and trusting God with little things, when the bigger things come, then we can trust him with those and our faith is really strong. And hopefully, we eventually get to a point where we know that God can handle every problem. There is no problem too big for God, right? That is super strong faith. So that's what I want us to work on this week. We're going to exercise our faith just like we exercise our muscles. Got to push it a little bit farther every day. Push ourselves to the limits, right? So we're going to trust God to be super duper every day. And he's going to handle all our problems. Right? Okay. Shall we, shall we pray? We'll do our repeat after me prayer. Dear God, we are thankful that we can trust you to handle any problems that come into our lives. Help us each day to exercise our faith so it will become strong. We love you so much, Lord, and we thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, thanks guys. Remember, we gotta exercise our faith this week.
The Old Testament reading today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Before the sun and the light and the moon and the stars grow dark and the clouds return after the rain, when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men stoop, when the grinders cease because they are few and those looking through the windows grow dim, when the doors to the street are closed and the sound of grinding fades, when people rise up at the sound of birds, but all of their songs grow faint, when people are afraid of heights and dangers in the streets, when the almond tree blossoms and the grasshopper drags itself along and desire no longer is stirred. Then people go to their eternal home and mourners go about the streets. Remember him before the silver cord is severed and the golden bowl is broken, before the pitcher is shattered at the spring and the wheel broken at the well and the dust returns to around it to the and the dust returns to the ground it came from and the spirit returns to god who gave it meaningless meaningless says the teacher everything is meaningless that's it for the old testament reading now we go to the new testament book of james chapter 1 verses 2 through 18 Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position, but the rich should take pride in their humiliation, since they will pass away like a wild flower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant, its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away, even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Don't be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits to all he created. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. As I approached 25 years on this earth coming up next month, I had trouble deciding what I could speak about. As I look out into the crowd, I see former Sunday school teachers, 
youth group and mission trip leaders, and multiple moms and dads who helped to raise me. What could I possibly know that you all would even remotely want to hear? I'm not sure, but obviously Dave decided to ask me to fill in here for him for a reason. Albeit, it could have just been the easiest choice, being that I work right next to his office. So after all of my considerations, I decided the thing for me to, to do is to talk about my faith journey. Now most of you may know the bits and pieces, but just bear with me. I can promise you that this will be much shorter than any of Dave's sermons. <laughs> so let's go back. It's 2012, July 2nd, the day after my birthday, and I had just turned 13. I got this really cool blue slider phone. I don't know if any of you remember those, but uh, there was one of those kind of phones that had all of the numbers on the face, but if you turned it horizontal and slid it out, it had a whole keyboard on it. Um, I was pretty cool in the world of preteens. I was about to go to school that next August and be so cool. I was sitting in the hospital hallway playing on said phone. My grandparents, mom, and sister were in the hospital room behind me talking with the doctors. My uncle had been sick on and off again since that Easter before, but whatever they were talking about, I'm sure it was fine. Nothing bad had happened to me up until this point. I was pretty lucky. I had all sets of grandparents. I had a two-year-old nephew who thought I was the coolest person on the planet. And I could now text any of my friends in full sentences. Life was pretty good. Or so I thought. I've always been a pretty observant person, and when I'm having a conversation with somebody, I can usually feel their feelings. Um, but that day, my family walked out of the room in tears of desperation, and I couldn't understand why, until I finally got told the news. My favorite, goofy, sometimes dysfunctional, Uncle Brian Stark, wasn't just sick with diverticulitis. He was diagnosed with colon cancer at the age of 40. After a bit of sulking, everyone jumped right into action. There were surgeries, radiation, chemo, all the fancy cancer terms. About a year and a half later, they, thought, they even thought he could pull through. But as most of you know, that wasn't the case. September 11th, 2014, Uncle Bo finally had an end to his pain and suffering. Now, for those of you who never got the chance to meet Brian Stark, he always referred to himself as kind of a big deal, which would make us all roll our eyes in return. He was, in fact, the life of every party. If you didn't know him when you walked into the room, you did before you left. He always knew how to make fun of you in the best way. When he passed, there was a huge hole in my family. He left behind two children, 12 and 10, a hog farm, and about 1,800 acres that he farmed alongside my grandpa. My family had no other option than to dive right back into reality. My uncle insisted that my dad and mom take over the farming side. At this point, I was now 15. I had to watch my, la my family's lives com completely turn upside down. After two years, or, and two years later, after when we fi finally started to settle into our new lives, my grandma passed with what can only be described as a broken heart from losing her baby boy. We were all very close. My cousins and I grew up like brother and sister. My parents had been a staple to my my grandparents had been a staple to my life, and I didn't know how hard it would be to watch my mom lose half of her original family tree in just two years. I had always known God and did all the right things. I prayed, came to church every Sunday, and never questioned him before. But when all of this occurred, I couldn't help but think why, as most people do. Why had God taken so much from us when we had been so happy before? Opportunities that we had never been given were placed right into our laps, alongside so much grief. My dad got his dream job. He was born to be a farmer. And I don't think the word job is the correct description for him even. After six years of farming, my parents were in a financial position that they could hire me on as a farmhand. Watching my dad do what he loves allowed me to find my passion for farming as well. And after all, if a man can do it, why can't I? I continued and still ask God why he chose this path, path for our lives. If it weren't for, my, for the passing of my uncle, I would have never found my love for my career. I also wouldn't be 24 and have just purchased my first 80 acres. 
I may never know the answer to all my questions in this, but like I tell my family all the time, I can hardly wait to meet Jesus at that gate with my long list. I never had an aha moment, as we speak of at camp. No moment in time that I looked up at the sky and saw Jesus miming to me the reasons as to which I was placed on this earth in this time. But one thing I do know is that life is hard. It was never promised to be easy on any of us. Being a Christian isn't about taking the easy way out. In fact, I think it could very well be the harder decision. One thing I have always felt is love, even in my darkest moments, when the world seems to be falling in on top of me. It's always his love. I find it in the smiles from the greeters at the front door, the hugs from Grandma Sharon, the encouragement from Galen after him and Laurel have attended every single engage meeting, to the thankful prayers at session meetings, and the cries from babies on Sunday mornings. So when someone asks me why I choose Jesus, I'm always quick to answer, it's his love. I'm not always the best with words, so I found a poem that I think describes my feelings very well. It's called The Shape of the Mountains by Kate Lab. The mountains by their shape, like arrows point to their maker, and the trees in same vein stretch to the heavens, higher, 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 still, they cannot touch you or your glory, your total otherness. With awe and wonder, I sit in your creation. So many variations, colors, and textures, and my eyes consume only a small taste of one space and time in your creative history. Both the small and the grand astound me, the century-old trees and their new spring leaves. Both the majestic and mundane reflect your greatness. The roaring waterfalls and rolling farms show your care, your creativity, your order. You contain and limit the elements in elegance. The sky, the sea, the earth, the sun, the stars. All of them, your creative order, whisper and shout. Look at my maker. See the one who is greater than all this. I will glory in these gifts. But even more so, I will glory in the giver who today designed these fragile flowers for my eyes to feast on. The first time that I heard that poem, I couldn't help but sit in it. The shape of the mountains even point to him. I once heard a story of a young man who spoke at local universities, and every speech he had was the same. I only have three months to live. Don't pity me. I pity you because you think you have forever to live. You're wasting your time on getting people to like you, and there's already a creator who loves you more than you know. He knows everything there is to know about you, and he loves all of you. Towards the end of this young man's life, he laid in his hospital bed in his home, gathered all of his friends around him, and pointed out what he loved about each of them, one by one. He ended it with, I have very few breaths left, and I don't want to waste them. But if you call yourself a Christian and you're still breathing, you've got a lot of work to do. I think of that daily. We've got a lot of work to do. And I do believe our church is working hard. But guys, we aren't even close to finishing yet. It's our turn to spread Jesus' love. One thing that I know deep down in my soul is that I'm not long for this world of hurt and pain. But it's my job to help my brothers and sisters in Christ get to the next life because it is so much better. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join me in the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church, let us confess our sins. I believe in the God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into heaven, and sitteth and rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, today we pray you will be with all of those who suffer. Be with those who are hungry, who thirst, who are without shelter. Lord, be with those who have not heard your word. We pray that you will guide us to bring peace to the afflicted, comfort to those who suffer, and the love of God to all. We pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated for the morning offering. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the abundant gifts and blessings you have bestowed upon us. We bring these gifts today, and we know that they are small when compared to all the ways in which you have blessed us. But we pray by your power they are magnified, and that you use them to share your love in the world. We pray you use, as well, use us as well, Lord. We stand ready to serve you and our community and your church. We stand ready to do all you call us to do. Lord, guide us to be the hair bearings of your love in this world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is a video, Open the Eyes of My Heart by Randy Travis.
Go into the world, spreading and sharing the love of God with all you meet. May the peace and love of Christ be with you all. Amen.